and event produce the Chetland Hess. And he and you should have innovative ideas of what you yourselves can do here. Hands will get down. Some of our demonstrators up here. Uh, it's a terrific festival. I think every one of us has been incredibly impressed. As as our celebrity chef Michelle Leffer that you just uh, spoke to just now, and we have to thank the sponsors of that, which is Cook Aquaculture. So getting hand of the bear. Great seafood, Scottish Sea Farm, Shetland Seafood, Shetland Shellfish Management Organisation, Scottish Salmon, Shetland FM, Morris Construction, and appropriately Anderson's Butchers, who of course not only own the butcher shop, the high quality butcher shop on Commercial Road but also they were involved in, I think, a place that's really proved how successful things can be in terms of customer service too, with the steak you so well bullies me. The two boys who were with introduced to you both work at Anderson's Butchers and Butchers. Uh, on the far right here, uh, we have uh, Chris uh, Wright. Chris, I first met uh, a couple of years ago when he was literally throwing himself over walls and running up and doing a lane doing a thin cat parkour, which I really couldn't have had a look why anybody in their right mind would want to spend the night doing that because Chris tells me he doesn't do that anymore. It's a very energetic sport, I think. And while it's more likely to miracle you as excite you, I can assure you. He says he's too old. But what he's done in the, in the past few years since we first met is that he's taken up an apprenticeship at the age of 25, which he thinks is old. Uh, I'm saying nothing. Uh, and uh, he's immersed himself, I think is the best way to, to put it in everything that's good about the, the meat trade and the butchery trade and also the food trade. I think we're right to say that, Chris. Uh, William is uh, a guy that Chris Kess, one of those mentors of Anderson Butchers. One of the things he said was coming to uh, an apprenticeship at the age of 25. It was very uh, weird, was the word he used, I think, that a lot of his mentors were younger than him. I don't know if Tony is, but... I am. Tony Muller <laughs> <laughs> Tony Muller is, uh, was one of the... As a, as an apprentice butcher as well, Tony. Yeah. Uh, we are Anderson's, and also a mentor to Chris. So, what we've got here today is really a twofold thing. Uh, butchery, and all the science, I guess, that's a word, uh, that goes with that. And also, we will be cooking... Uh, well, I'll tell you what, Chris, you tell us what we're going to be cooking as well. Well, today I'm going to be cooking uh, lamb leg steaks, which is a favourite in Shetland, I've decided. Um, I'm just going to do it a little bit differently, just to show that you can cook at home in about 25 minutes to half an hour, something really good that's not just something thrown in the freezer, thrown in the oven. Um, so just, really, we're going to break down the lamb and start a wear. So, Tony, if you want yeah. to start pulling her apart. Oh, it's not, you've got your Tony, just... As to, as to get into things, literally here. Uh, is it important to thought that they're coming in to buy a cut of lamb or a cut of meat at any time? The case, but they should be buying in terms of the dish they want to do. It's not just the case of buy anything to do with something, is it? Yeah, customers can ask us questions about how long something needs to be cooked or the, how lean it is or how fatty it is or how best to prepare it. So. With our knowledge of the meat, then we can give them good advice on how to cook a good meal. Good stuff. And what exactly is we going to put the starting point here? Yeah, we have a whole lamb, which has obviously been, for want of better words, disemboweled, actually. <laughs> we'll not get to that stage. What's the starting process for... So I'm going to take the legs off first, and then I'm going to split them and take one part down, and take a section off of it to cut the steaks for Chris to cut. To cook, sorry. Okay. Okay. On with that, and Chris, what's uh, the start of the process of this one? Uh, well, I'm just um, cut the potatoes and then apply them in the bag to boil over. Um, I hope they don't boil over, but just to boil up. Um, and these tartines are from Brasa from LS Cooper. So keeping it local again, I'm just going to slip down in the, the pot. I have mentioned that you can't uh, butcher your breakfast at uh, 25, but yeah. we'll be a bit more into that in a minute. Yep. What made you decide to change to so, And what did you do before you do actually come to butchery? Oh, I've, I've done many things. Actually, before I did butchery, I was working at Mind Your Head as a project worker. Um, and really, when the apprenticeship came up, I just decided that I wanted a complete change. Um, and what different, like, how far a field change can you get from going from mental health spot worker into butchery? Completely, com something completely different. Mm -hmm. you know? And you say it's too far and a bit weird to be coming into 
uh, a work process like that at 35. What, what was the, what made it weird for you? What was, uh, was it just the fact that you felt there was a bit old for it? Second order, well, it's just generally when people speak about dance ships and think about 16, 17 year old classical. And, like, I think that's something in Butchery that actually doesn't happen that often. Folk kind of tend to come into it a little later. Um, but when I first started, I never realised that. So, when I was being taught, I was being taught by folk who generally were younger than me, such as Tony here. Um, and it was just just an eye-opener to see how much knowledge they had at such a young age. Um, but the passion behind it as well, and I really do believe that the passion that they had has been driven into me because they taught me that, so... Yeah. Tony, what made the take off boots of the end of What was the attraction of this particular play compared to it's, any other? It's always seen interest in uh, working with me and stuff like that, but I, I actually got into it by an accident. Thank you very much. Uh, it was a couple of days' work that turned into five and a half years, and I I've never left. Really? It's, it's a good job and it's a good trade to know. I'll keep it for the rest of my life, really, whether I continue it as a trade or not. Once left, never forgot. Oh, okay, Chris, explain a bit more about the, the prep for the dish we're doing here. So, what I'm doing at the moment is just creating a bit of a marinade for the lamb. Um, so I'm just putting some sea salt, some pepper, some rosemary, balsamic vinegar and some red currant jelly. Um, I managed to get this all from Scoop over there, one of our um, local producers. Just managed to get some quality produce. So I'm going to put the balsamic in and the olive oil. And then when the lamb leg steak comes off, then I'll put them in that, leave them in there until it's ready to cook. The top's not off that, so that's not going to come out. Okay, Tony, you know, we've, we've got the lights off. Let's do it with the, the dissection process. I need to take the bone out of this in order to make it sticks, or I could cut it like that and then saw the bones at the end, it would be a leg chop. We're having sticks today. So this is where it stays? It will be. Do you feel that? One of the things I asked earlier was the fact that it seems that lamb is a significantly less popular meat in Shetland at least than maybe elsewhere. But beef for it, you never really think of going into your butcher and saying, can I have two lamb steaks and then go into your butcher and say, can I have two sub steaks? Why, why is that? Or is that a factor of my business or something? No, I think you're quite right in saying that. I think it's just due to trends and styles. Um, obviously, off the beef, um, you're getting a lot more steaks off of a big cow than you would off of a pretty lamb. So it's easier for folk to cook roasts with lamb because you can get a good, ro good sized roast out of a leg. While you might not get too many steaks out of a leg. Um, and I think that's just due to trends for chefs or with butchers that they can sell more of a sirloin, like a strip loin from a cow, and they can't roll leg, leg, leg steaks from a lamb out of the set. And we mentioned earlier as well about the native Shetland breeds. You're no particularly used the native Shetland breed, but it is, this is still recognised as Shetland land, right? so even though it's a cross. It is, it's born and bred and dealt with in Shetland. Um, it is a cross breed, but the reason why we use them is that they're actually a bigger animal, get a lot more meat to bone ratio, um, and Daily when you take them to the slaughterhouse, then it's the same price to get one laid off as it is like a big one to a small one. So really, for well, economics, then it's actually better off for us to get the bigger lambs. But that's no reflective the quality at all. Oh no, no, like, no. like the lambs that we get in are beautiful. Um, some of the crossbreeds are really nice fat coverage on it. Um, some of them are really lean and really depending on what folk are want, and then they can actually kind of ask for a lean lamb or a fatty lamb, depending on what they're cooking, so. Yeah, so you dispense this, as Tony was saying, a fair bit of advice in that direction yep. as well. And in terms of my apprenticeship, I mean, it is an apprenticeship, it is a job, but from what I was reading in Shetland Life, which has been out for a couple of weeks or so, yep. it's become a bit of a passion, almost an obsession. I mean, we were having a joke about the bathroom thing. It was literally given up 
Well, I'm going to say that you're going to have to be a mask and be subject. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, as I say, like the passion that the folks who I work with, it, they just throw that into me. And I'm so thankful of it because it's given me something that I am really passionate about. I go home and literally look at meat on, on, the, on the internet, which maybe sounds a bit wrong, but like that is literally what I do. And I have an Instagram page that I put photos up of meat all day. And you know what I mean? It's just, yeah. it's just something that I just, you know, just live it, I suppose. That must be helped, that must help to get up in the morning and go to work though. Oh yeah, like, like get up in the morning and even if I am knackered then I can still drag myself out of bed because I, I know that I'm going to do at least a handful of things that I enjoy. Fantastic. So what are we are we to uh, cook it now? Well, that's Tony just cooking, uh, cutting the, the leg sticks. I'm just going to go through by and find something. Tony, it's been an ideal depth for a, a steak. Chris <laughs> 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 asked me for thin ones so he could cook them nice and quickly in 25 minutes. Okay. Oh. I prefer a thick one myself though. So I was going to make real lamb stock for this, but I've actually just gone with a cube because nearly who has time to make lamb stock at home. Um, chefs and stuff make that in the kitchens because it does really make their meals amazing, but really when we've got jobs we don't have time to do that. So we've just gone with a basic stock cube today. And you know as I mentioned got a, an outlet uh, to some extent if we can that through the, the steakhouse in Shepherd. I mean that must be a relative the end of it but the butcher is not only you know, involved in the process that you are, you sell it through your own shop as a retail item, but you're now literally owning and running the restaurant through the same company. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, um, it's actually really nice to be able to see it from, like, obviously, Anderson Butchers gets all of their meat from very much. This is our lamb leg steaks, I'm just going to set them in the marinade now. Um, as I was saying, um, all of our meat comes from, like, family like Ian Anderson's cousins. So we keep it completely in the family from from the farm to the folk, yeah. effectively, which is really nice. It's a really nice kind of touch to have on a, on a business. That just reminds us which of you are in here. Uh, that's balsamic vinegar, um, olive oil, rosemary, the shell and sea salt, and just the ground black pepper. <laughs> Something nice and simple. I don't know if like us so we that uh, reduce is the word, I guess. Uh, what should we do with this? Taking the shoulders off. Yep. Count five ribs in. How much of the land do you actually use and how much is wasted in terms of, I guess, a, a rough percentage? Because when we hear in the name of the restaurants, uh, we speak to Michelle Leppard earlier on, that who, uh, uh, it's not the nose to tail attitude. I mean, it's the fact that you don't do that. Is that just lack of public demand for stuff like that? I guess. Uh, I don't know. I think people have, like almost the younger kind of generations have forgotten how to use everything from an animal, and I think that's come from the kind of supermarket trends that you go into a supermarket, pick up a salad, go to a supermarket, pick up some lamb chops, while in a butchery, then you can get everything. Um, and I think people have just kind of, as I say, forgotten how to use everything. And I'm kind of hoping that the way the picture is going at the moment and how chefs are kind of going in trends, that we might be able to get everyone to use everything from the animal again. Um, we see that people are sometimes quite squeamish, squeamish about using things. And I think that's a bit, a bit of a shame, because actually some of the things that you can get from animals that you wouldn't usually have stunning. You can get some really nice cuts off of Perfectly good bits. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it's a, a public perception thing. Mm -hmm. What would you say to somebody that say, in terms of yeah. buying for you, why should I buy my meat to you as a butcher, rather as going and buy a pack to, well, whatever you in the supermarket, really? Well, uh, um, the quality. Well, not purely down to quality, but that would be the main reason I would think. Another reason would be that you can you can't go into Tesco and speak to uh, someone who stacks shelves and 
get the explanation of the, how to cook a, a meal with the meat that you're buying, basically. So quality of service as well as quality of produce. Yeah, so there's a very good reason. And, and if somebody was complaining about the price, that I thought about would be a price worth paying. Well, I guess the price is no really at the end of the day, maybe all that level. It's, it is more expensive, but I personally think it's a price worth paying. Um, not everyone has the, the same budget still, so it's, it's everyone's preference. Yeah, it's also quite close to really at the end of the day. And let's go that way this way, this is the... This is the middle, um, so it's the line running through the centre there and then flank on either side, which will be taken off. where you get the lamb chops from. Yes, yeah, so this is in effect the uh, rib cage really is, yeah. is doing it, yeah. yeah. Chris, we mentioned about the passion uh, they do have more. Yeah. 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 So they came along the house and on one dark evening and we had a great meal. They, they had some really nice food. Um, kinda kinda surprised myself that I could actually cook for folk who I didn't know quite comfortably and didn't really phase me at all. So it was good fun. Yeah, great stuff. Was the was the Kunan cook in the floor? You got into butchery, is that something that's come uh, yeah. this as part of the job as it were? I've always been interested in cooking, but obviously as the jobs come into it, um, I've got more and more interested in it. And it's just something that's grown. Obviously, it's a natural progression that in the butchery I'm working with food all day and kind of wonder, hmm, wonder what that'll be like, or wonder what I can make of this. And you create and stuff that work the whole time. So obviously, you're kind of curious to see how, how it's going to go. Yeah. And Tony, for me, uh, we mentioned that. Uh, this is just kind of giving up uh, almost a normal or a, a social life to become a mess and uh, it's just something to do, uh, to do share as passion for that or is to have a, a life outside butchery as it were. I'd like to have a life outside of butchery. Uh, <laughs> like you were saying before, the passion of the ones that taught him really were to rub off on him. So. I'd like to think that that was my passion that rubbed off on him. I was going to say, there must be a man to be proved that somebody that just been better than actually has taken it to this level, really. It's fantastic to see, yeah. Taking their company as a whole to better places. I probably could have a feedback on both places here at the moment as well, which must like be good to, to work for a firm that gets that sort of local accreditation. Yeah, it's a kind of challenge, of course, that A, folk are very choosy, B, they're very quick to, to criticise or born when yeah. something doesn't go right. So when you have kind of uniformed uh, accolades, I guess it must not be all very good as, uh, as folk working in a, in a business like that. Got a very lucky boss. <laughs> He's saying all the right things here. Yeah. <laughs> <Ka -ching. laughs> So, Chris, where are we with the, with the cooking? Well, I'm just kind of finishing up the lamb chop. The, the <laughs> yes. lamb leg stitches now, I'm just going to put them in the oven just to let them I didn't even catch kind of the no rest, but just keep cooking slowly. Um, and I'm going to start frying the potatoes. Just to uh, take to suggest that, again, a bit like Michelle was doing earlier, that the less, for good quality meat at least, the less you do to it, to detract from the flavour of the lamb, the better. Yeah, like, the meat often gets kind of subdued and people are trying to add flavours to it. And I really do agree with the idea that you should be able to let the meat cook, like, speak for itself. 
because especially with Shetland meat, it's stunning. It's absolutely gorgeous. And a lot of people are just all too happy to like slather pepper sauce on it, which sometimes I am a little bit um, guilty of. But you should let the meat speak for itself because really the fact that it's in the meat and the quality of the meat, it's good enough as it is. You try to sell that through the restaurant, because I've been mean, there a number of times, but of course you're, uh, you get a choice, of course, you can have pepper sauce or glaze or whatever we have, but is there an effort kind of through the restaurant as well as through the butchery to sell almost or offer the meat in, in its kind of natural format, whether it's the, the um, normal restaurant approach? Like, I wouldn't really like to speak for the restaurant, like speak for the restaurant because obviously I'm not a representative of them, but. Um, I know that Ryan definitely knows his stuff and how, how he cooks it is some of the best steak that I've ever had. So I can't, as I say, I can't really comment on how he would cook stuff. I'll second um, that. But I'm thing. sure we could drag him up and, well he's actually waving over there, so he's, he's keen to speak I think. He's such a shy and he can't think he would want to be involved at all. No? You claim he's busy of course. Yeah, I think it would be the game. We are here, it's on a shame that we're here to, to sell the product and the business of the chef. But the thing that's been quite amazing for me on a number of occasions is just the level of accolades at the, at the meat in the restaurant and elsewhere gets. We pop the company suit who you think to think that we have more, a, a wider range of dining experiences as we do at Shepherd. And yet they do come to you and, and, and say, hey, that's one of the best things I've ever mm -hmm. had anywhere. Yeah. And uh, I think that's another. Fantastic, absolutely, not only for the company, but for Sheffield in general. Oh, definitely. Like, um, even our assessor who comes up quite regularly to assess the butchers in Shetland has said that, that it's one of the best things he's had. And he's going around the country, he's assessing the butchers and probably going into other like steakhouses up and down the country. Um, I think that's, as you say, an accolade in itself that people are speaking about it. And there's no real bigger kind of way to say, like, thanks to folk is just to keep cooking for them and keep making the quality good. Yeah, give that feedback. Yeah. Okay, Tony, we're uh, well like the process. What's exactly you do? So now we're here, taking the bones from the flank. Um, flank is a very underused cut. It tends to be quite fatty, which is it's probably... It's much thinner than fatty, really. Yeah, which is probably why it's a little harder to shift. But if it's slow cooked, all the fat will cook through it and it is delicious. If you like lamb, then it's, it's what very tasty. What kind of dishes would you uh, use the look of this, the flag tip, ideally speaking? Stewing, uh, sometimes we actually tight, stuff it, and and roll it, slices the lamb julienne, sauce it, or something in the middle um, of it. Or, uh, or uh, you could maybe stick some sauce meat in the middle, roll that up again. And tie it and then, and then roast it off in the lamb plant roast. Yeah, because it's almost, it's, and it's just slightly thicker as pre cut bacon almost. It's a uh, it kind of, to be at least, a kind of consistency with the cut. Yeah, sometimes. Um, yeah. It can cook up so well. Well, I mean, a it's lot like of the trim, uh, we get rid of a lot of trim, the uh, right. saffron and, and, and uh, what little meat there is in there will be the yurt. Very tender. Yeah. So an awful lot of the sugar and the flank, we just mix and mince and they tack, oh, they tack it for their... Uh... And how are we doing there, Chris? How's that? Ah, good. Uh, that is uh, coming up good. In fact, we're doing pretty well. We're getting rid of lamb and we can pretty the much get yeah, rid of all of it. The, the steaks, the steak is... The loins, scalp or tail will be a lot of loins and racks. And then the shoulders and the flanks, we can get rid of the mist of that to the Indians. So, fresh product from so that pans up, we get a little bit of it. I think it is, especially in the tune. Like, um, I think just it's so close, and they're actually really, really nice parties. And I have to be slightly biased. I was from the nest and grew up in the nest, so I, I do appreciate the nest party every so often. Probably the question I think we're just speaking about almost quality and enhanced quality. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, no, at all, no. How do you grow a good cat, Mr. Cake? I have no clue, but I think that if you would speak to Liam Anderson over in the Ball Sal, he would probably have a good idea because 
Um, I used to live with Liam actually last year and the amount of things that he managed to teach me just about local habs and local things that I never even knew you could eat is phenomenal. So he was probably the best off he was. Yeah, and I didn't have maybe expected to have all the answers, but uh, now I do. But uh, there's a lot. It's <laughs> <laughs> just well. So is there anything that you can actually really just throw this away at the moment, the fact that the work is a work? Uh, uh, well that is so actually... Is there anything that you can actually use that for in any way? There is things you can use that for. Um, that would make a nice dripping, for instance, making roast tatties. That's perfect for that. Um, not a lot else, really, other no, than that. But it's it just fat. Yeah, but it is a usable thing, it's, it's a usable yeah, product. Yeah, totally it's usable. Usable. Uh, a to if, people, yeah. if people were to come and ask for it quite regularly, then I guess we would save it and we'd never chuck it away, but it, again, it's underused, it's not very well known about, I suppose. Yeah, but they can just cook it vegetable or whatever, and ignore mm. the meat. Uh, the, other, the other options. And uh, so, the rules of the neck now. Rules of the neck. Some people call it the scrag end. And again, what would you use that for? Is that, would you make soup on that or whatever? That has, the, the bone in it would be very good for stock. It's um, probably tender meat again, yeah, would make a really nice soup. Uh, but again, if, uh, it's, it's quite cheap and underused, but there is only one neck to an animal, so if people were to always ask for necks, then we'd run out of them pretty quickly. <laughs> you would have a ready supply of <laughs> You just have to hope they don't get too popular now. I'm not saying that way too. <laughs> Put a higher price on it or something. Yeah. They do is keep it the kidneys, I see, as well. Kidneys are quite popular, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, a lot of people like kidneys. So why are the kidneys left in the turkeys? I don't really know how to cook them, but... Uh, oh, Michelle, Michelle, I don't know. They just all... Always, always left, left yeah, in, in, uh, in Latin, yeah. Really mm -hmm. Test the guy my kidney, test the one. Uh, in, in earlier days, in my earlier mm -hmm. life, we were... When I was years, younger, then we used to... Uh, but yeah, and she just cooked them basically... Well, like the lace like fat, fat that cook, that's around the stomach. Oh, right, yeah. I mean, that used to be tame, and then when the, the lamb was hung up, they would wrap that around the back legs and dress the back legs with that, and down over the rump. And then when solidified, so when you actually cut the lamb up, then all that fat, that suet fat stayed on the on the leg. So when you get to roast it, then you hang that fat on the outside to add the moisture and everything to the leg and to crisp the outside of it. For a long that's time, then you weren't allowed to keep it. And here, I have still some of the abattoir suit still work with that. that. I've seen it done, way. but they don't seem to do it here. I don't know what the reason is. Yeah, good. I'm just um, doing some green beans up and some butter, some Shetland butter, I might add, um, just to try and get them uh, tasting nice and good. Um, smelling great anyway. I think that. Hope so. We've kind of put some shelling butter and some mint in there as well, some yeah, freshness. Yeah, yeah. And then after this, then I'll be going on to making the sauce and gravy, just to go over the height of the lamb. Okay, how do you just do 50 approach for the sauce? Uh, well, I'm going to take the lamb steaks out again. I'm going to get them, get the pan really nice and hot, sear the steaks again, put them back in the oven, and then use the same pan to make the gravy. So you're using the fat from the, the lamb, and you're using the butter, you're using everything that you've cooked with to enhance the flavour. Yeah, yeah. Back a final product. Yep. Do you want to show them what big lower dissections here? This is the shoulder. This is the shoulders, yeah. Pretend to bone and roll. Mm -hmm. It's a shame we don't have any string. Messages. Michelle would maybe want to come over with some string. You don't need to know it. Okay. Well, Tell you one thing I will have to ask you, good, because I quite often get asked by tourists, what is sasame? And I'm always kind of trying to tell them what I think it is. It's How would you describe to tourists that you want to sell it to what sasame is? Tell me what you think it is fast and then we'll see if you're right on that. Tell us what you think it is fast and then we'll... Well, historically, I suppose, it, uh, the sort of history that was the poorer cuts of meat that was minced out, there was a lot of... Uh, 
Uh, might be bits and pieces added there, things like that, that, which I'm, I'm sure there is. That doesn't mean the tax or the quality of the product of the test, of course. Uh -huh. But uh, yeah, I when think you're trying to sell it to somebody that, shall we say, no headed before, what would you say? And, and, and about, kind of, how does it differ, for instance, for beef burgers? Because it clearly does, but it's, yeah, I'm well, assuming it's maybe the same process. It's, it's much the same process, yeah. It's just the different kind of seasonings. It's, it is a little bit of a fatty mix, but in shit and folk really do enjoy that. Um, that really nice and rich flavour that comes in there. And the Shetland diet is quite a salty diet, like a traditional diet, because obviously we've had to be able to preserve stuff in the right way. Um, and it is just a kind of, it's, it's a delicacy in its own. You can't really describe what it is, in my opinion. Well, so you have to buy it, and there's so many people that come up, try it, and just a flat of them, they've never had it before. Well, it's hard to see that, because we actually... That's uh, just the way you use them up, the, either. The Shetland Pumper Group up there. Robbie's since left, though. They did, they have a trim, a lot of sausage there like that. Completely got rid of that, and you'd pass it, which is great. They used to make it. It was the absolutely worst popular thing. They would put it in uh, yeah, yeah. jars, madly, and then they would uh, rind the sewer mm -hmm. and, and then pour the tops of the jars to seal them, and then they would just keep so them in the pantry for months. Yeah. And so it was, it was a way of seasoning doing meat to keep it in. Uh, <laughs> love, love but true sesame it was made for. Not very often, occasionally. For her grandsons or granddaughters uh, school project, but they used to use shoulder blades in the uh, Iron Age, I think, as shovel. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah. 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 Demand in Shetland to call you for I've never been asked to give bone marrow on its own before. I imagine it's doable. People do yeah, that. Not, not yeah. something I've personally dealt with. So you paint the source of everything that you, you supply, basically. Yeah, yeah but just, um, it was kind of one of my own challenges that I wanted to try and get everything as local as I could, or at least buy from a, a local shop. And we're speaking this pretty vigorously, really. Yeah, 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 it's just trying to get it to kind of boil down, get some of the moisture out of it, get it thicken up. Hopefully with the jelly in it, it'll come to a nice kind of Sticky amalgamation of sauce, I hope. Uh, again, what kind of jelly is this this year? It's the red currant jelly. It's managed to get it from um, Scoop. And it's actually got pot in that one. So it should be nice and tasty. Well, it is nice and tasty because I've, I've maybe trialled this cooking a couple of times this week. Or not. 
Is the new one a trial and error stuff? Or just experiment? Oh yeah, yeah. I think I think trial and error is just part of the the rhyme and reason why a lot of chefs or a lot of home cooks do things is just to see if things will work and see if we can make it better or sometimes it doesn't work and sometimes it does. It's just part of the game. But I guess it's exciting when you try something kind of new and it does work. Oh yeah, yeah. Like, the, that's the satisfaction of the, of the job you're sticking with. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. It's kind of the same with butchery as well, like putting stuff on the counter and it's, uh, it's always a trial to work out what people are going to want to buy in that day. Um, obviously we can kind of go by the weather, if it's sunny the folk will want burgers and if it's raining and stews and olives are quite popular. Um, but it's just nice to, to experiment with things. So some of this even weather depends on that? Oh yeah, yeah, easy, yeah. There's no doubt about that. Yeah, I guess barbecues and, and everything else. Yeah. Tony, there's uh, doing a bit of stringing up here, what's the what's the purpose of that? Well, once I've taken all the bones out of this lamb's shoulder, it doesn't exactly hold together too well. So, if we just roll it up nice and tightly, make it look neat. And tie the string around it and it'll hold its shape while it's cooking. Yeah, hold it together. Something I haven't asked you is that can you feel like as a, a butchery apprentice of last? Feel like it's a chance to become either a butcher and or a master butcher. And uh, exactly I guess when it's a master butcher compared to uh, an ordinary butcher that there is such a thing. It's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> it really does value on the individual and how much they put into it. Like if if they're going to their apprenticeship or their place of work and putting 20% in, it's going to take them five times longer than someone who's putting 100% in. So it really does depend on the individual. Um, I think the kind of average thing Jay never with the Scottish Meat really Federation... Oh. He did his level yeah, too. Yeah, he never got his, the rest of it finished because his back just became so bad he couldn't have done it. That's um, why he's ended up doing what he a does. A lot of people in Anderson's push <laughs> a lot faster. I've got to say, like, as a training partner, they are phenomenal and that's why they won the uh, training partner of the year last year um, and it definitely shows through the way that like Ian gets folk to teach uh, like yeah as, as they get folk to teach folk and just has that passion in the company um, the company's gone through a lot of changes as you've said with having new businesses new things coming in um, We've just opened up the cafe at the steakhouse as well, so that's another new venture. But everyone's kind of come together and just managed to get it to work, which is phenomenal in my opinion. Okay. So you would clearly yeah. say that the effort, for instance, of your management, but then Sometimes. it's a clear investment in the company and a benefit mm -hmm. to the company. It's no, uh, Sometimes. It's no something that's a cost to the company. For <laughs> everything time. comes oh, together. Yeah, yeah, like, <laughs> like everything that the company does is they put their whole selves into it. And that's the same with everyone in the company. It's just... They're always right, driving to get the best out of us and get the best out of the products that we have. And then in that kind of way that they managed to make some amazing kind of companies, sub-companies, whatever you want to call them. So that's my one life that's done. Is there a lot of competition? I think there's not too many groups left in Shetland, uh, too, but uh, is there competition between companies to be the best in, in Shetland? Or is it I don't know, like, I don't know if there's much competition or if it's, I know that obviously on a financial level there's a lot of competition to try and draw folk to them, but I know that in Anderson's then we always try to get the quality the highest that we can get it. Um, that doesn't mean that someone else might not be able to make a high quality, but we really strive on everything that we put on our account and everything that we put into the country shops, everything that we put in the vaults is the highest quality we possibly can do. Because um, if it isn't, then what's the point in doing it? Well, yeah, you'd uh, you ship it to the customers, I guess. That yep. speaks for itself. That's it. Okay, this is uh, coming uh, relatively near the end of the right path, I suppose. Yes, it's looking, looking fantastic. It's smelling fantastic, that's for sure. I think it's awesome. It is fantastic. I don't think there's going to be any good with that, to be honest with you. Can't you tell? Tony, is this sort of the end of the process for you as well? Is this uh, um, ready to go? Well, that's a uh, rolled lamb shoulder. 
I'll not bother working with the other one just now. Um, that would be a flank that I was saying about for Julienne's. Just makes a nice, meaty little piece of lamb. And we have chopped here, which, as you can see, there's a fillet there and no fillet there. So that would be a double lamb, double loin lamb chop, and that would be a single loin lamb chop. 